Hey guys, welcome back. Thief here from Archer and Thief, and today, well, welcome, first of all, welcome to the Thieves Guild, or Thieves Guild, uh, playing Skyrim again. Welcome to the Thieves Den. It's me, and you already know him before, you love him, you tolerate him, he's my co-op partner when it comes to games like Resident Evil. Say hello, Gup. Yo, it's Gup alone, and hopefully y'all stay tuned for my album coming out, and y'all need to stay tuned on Archer, bruh. God damn, don't worry about it. Look, I'll, I'll tag I'll tag you once you send me the link and I'll put it in the description, all right? So we were discussing a few things we wanted to talk about beforehand. We were pouring ourselves some drinks, got a nice little Irish whiskey here and there, you know, just something to sip with, you know. We mixed it with a few things because I'm not trying to get too wired up. Not, not yet, at least. At least not for tonight. We, it's a chill thing. We're chilling in the dark. It's peaceful. It's vibing and everything. It's a good time, right? So... The thing we came up was, I, I believe you said our favorite, like cartoon growing up. Yeah, our favorite cartoon. Because I know you up. specifically just mentioned Danny Phantom. Mm -hmm. Is that your favorite, or is that like top five? That's at least. That's pretty hard because I'm really a Disney Disney fan. I was more but, Cartoon Network, but uh, Nick still has some heavy hitters though. It would be because you got Danny Phantom, Jimmy Neutron, SpongeBob. It would be, it, it would be my top four. Top four. Now, what would you? All right, so if that's top four, what are your other ones? My other ones. My first one would be Kim Possible. Kim Possible. Okay. Um, uh, my second one would be Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana. Okay. My third one would be. I didn't expect live action. But... My third one would be um, Avatar. Oh, that's a really good one too. Actually, not Avatar. Air, 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 Airbender, yeah. Airbender would be my third Specifically one. Specifically that one, yeah. Yeah, and then my fourth one would be uh, Danny Phantom. Danny Phantom, okay. Now the funny thing is about that too, Avatar, like it was super popular when it came out, but I remember the, like a year or two ago, a couple years back actually, it might have been like three or four. They re-showed Avatar: The Last Airbender from the very beginning, and they had like like little creditors notes here and there, like. Hey, this is some stuff you didn't know about the show. This is some stuff maybe we want to hint at that maybe no one picked up yet, so on and so forth. It was basically like a commentary edition on Avatar The Last Airbender. And the funny thing was, after that went off, do you know how many people and their mother were talking about how Avatar The Last Airbender was the best show in the world? Like, it, like fans were coming out the woodwork like, oh, see, I told you that that, that show was shit growing up, da 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 like. Oh yeah, I know, like Airbender is yeah, it like, is that show. He it's so good, and people were like, new fans especially, they were like, oh, this is so good, best show ever. Da, da, da. And I'm a, I'm gonna be with you. It has some kick. It it has some really good writing. Character development was solid. Like who who's your favorite character, real quick? Mm. I feel like I know the answer. But, all right, tell me. Go ahead. That's a hard one. Well, who do you think it is? Oh, who do I think your favorite character is? Mm -hmm. Soccer. Yep. I knew it. I fucking knew it. You seem like a soccer dude. And to be fair, soccer has a lot going for him. He starts off being like, oh, I'm the comedy relief. I got the boomerang. He pulled all, he pulled a lot of the best women. Yeah. He developed, he got development over time. He's like, I'm not a bender, but I can still kick ass. And he got his own sword and everything. He learned from a master and it, he was like, by the end of it, he was his own. He was a general. He was like, "I'm gonna help lead the efforts. We're gonna fight. We're gonna win." Like, and he was so good with it. But my favorite character actually is it's it's kind of a two part. It's Zuko and Azula, his sister, because I had a crush on Azula growing up because I thought she was like awesome. Because I was like, "Oh, she's so cool." And I got a thing for bad women, apparently. Shit. <laughs> like, and then Zuko because he was kind of the he was the antagonist but he was never the villain you know like he was an anti hero to at towards the end of it right oh my bad cheers y'all heard that hmm. but like he was never like like he was the end like he was never evil he was like I have a job from doing this job that's it I want my honor back so I have to capture you. No hard feelings, nothing personal, it is what it is. But then later on, he was like, no, I don't like you, Dad. You're evil. Boom. I don't need you. Went on his own, learned his own tech, learned some stuff, 
He even went off for a little bit as a he was a he had two. And I I always love this too because he had dual swords. I am a sucker. Come on, hit me out, hit me out. I am a sucker for anybody that dual wields. That's why I like Melina, Titana, and all them. They fight with two something, two sides, two mm-hmm. bands. Who's my favorite Ninja Turtle? Raphael. Two sides. I like Leonardo, but Raphael's my Wait, boy. See, my favorite is the... Yeah, favorite Ninja Turtle? My favorite Ninja Turtle is the, the, the leader. Name him or you're a fake fan. What's his name? Uh, He's in the blue. The name after painters. I don't know how many more things I can give you. He's named after a very famous painter, actually. Made the... Leonardo. There you go. No, you know what's funny, too? I was watching a YouTube video recently. Uh, Classic Man D. Cool guy. I like his stuff, right? He made shorts and everything, right? But I was looking at... And every now and again, I don't, I don't know if you ever do this, uh, Mr. Gup, but I have this thing where every now and again, I get kind of, Not nostalgic, but I start thinking about like, hey, I haven't seen this YouTuber in a while. Or, hey, I haven't watched this particular video in a while. I'll go back and watch this video, but then I'll start going down the rabbit hole of their other videos. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll watch this one, which will lead me to this one, which will lead me to that one, which will lead me to so on and so forth, right? Yeah. So I'll be like, okay, I'll watch this stuff, like, on How to Train Dragon, Ben 10. Then I'll be like, okay, now I'm talking about cartoons, da, da, da. And at one point, he brought up the Ninja Turtles. And I remember the show he brought up, from, like, it came out in, like, 2003. It was a Ninja Turtles thing. And he was like, but it had a theme song that came out like it was from the 90s. And... I don't know if you've ever seen theme songs from the 90s. They're like super explosive. They really, they're like really catchy. They're really fun. And I listened to the song after after he said it. And I was like, I remember this. Because I used to watch it. Because I don't know if you've ever, do you remember the cartoon TV show or the channel called Jetix? It had like a little eye on the front. And it was like, doo, 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 Jetix. I've seen it before, but I don't really remember remember it that well but there's a uh so there's a few they used to play cartoons same thing with like boomerang boomerang used to play old cartoons like the batman okay Looney yeah. Tunes, so on and so forth but later on as obviously as cartoons get older boomerang will start playing stuff from like the 2000s now it'll be like oh well this is considered old now so on and so forth same thing with nick at night and all these nick x disney xd and all these other they play like older stuff sometimes which i'm really upset they don't oh wait hold on let me uh let me change the photo I'm sorry about that it's supposed to be on random, but I, I kind of left it on this one for a bit, right? But, um, so as I was talking, though, it was like, these old cartoons and shows, I'm kind of just like, I really enjoy them. Oh, let me just leave. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this playing, but I really do enjoy them, but it's like, it makes me nostalgic for, like, when I was younger. Because, like, you know, when you're younger, you don't really think about it. It's like, no cares in the world, no worries. The only thing you're worried about is the next time you get, like, this little gusher, this little fruit snack. This little bag of chips. This little, the next time your favorite show comes up. You don't think about anything because every worry you can have in the world at this moment when you're younger, your family takes care of it. Your parents, right? Mm-hmm. Like I know when you got off of school, you were never like, how am I going to handle bills? How am I going to handle life? You're like, I'm going to go play my game. Mama pan the cooking, the cleaning, whatever else I need like in life. I'll be good right now. But you don't ever think about the long-term effects of just like, right. And that's the thing, like, um, whenever you grow up, your parents will say, oh, just wait until you wait till actually, you get older. yeah, wait till you get older. That's their favorite line. Wait till you get older. Wait till you're my age. Yeah. The thing we do is we don't listen, but we hear what they're saying, but we don't fully listen. But then when it finally hits us, whenever we graduate or to the point where we're in a situation and it comes down like hard on us and like, we're like, just mentally in a bad place that's when you'll that's finally when it know finally hits us like you'll be like oh, okay now i understand why my mom said it's, 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 it it's always when we're at our lowest it's never when we're like um it's never when we're like chilling and thriving having fun with everybody because it's always in it's always in that in the moment in that specific moment it's like hey you know this is what they meant it's never like we're chilling with everybody having fun having drinks being all Ooh, you know we're all good with everything in life it's never at that moment. It's always when we're like, man, I'm stressed out. I got bills. Like, I'm, I hate my coworkers. I'm about to fight somebody and whatnot. Like, how am I supposed to, how, what am I going to do tomorrow? I don't know yet. And then it hits them like, this is what they were talking about. And, it, it, but, and it's crazy because 
an artist. I feel bad for people jumping on this thing, like we're just having a nice conversation about whenever I put the tire of the beat, and they're just kind of like, why is this all existential now? Shit, I gotta go call my family now. <laughs> oh, nah, literally, uh, that's how it's gonna be. And it's crazy because, like, an artist once said, which is Drake, he was like, uh, motherfucker, he was like, like you say, an artist, it's like, you know, it's Drake, just say Drake. And they said, uh, he said, the person that works nine to five, I would date and have more respect for it because they're actually working hard to reach their goal or get to that point that they want to be. And see, what, what fuck, what good what fuck with me, right? People always belittle the poor man, right? But what gets me, this is what bothers me about that, though. When you think about it, though, the poor man is, has more character than the richer man. Now, don't get it twisted. The rich people, to an extent, or to, so for some people at least, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm, I'm going to be devil's advocate a little bit here. Some people were born into wealth. I'll give you that. Some people were born into riches and money and luxury, right? <laughs> but all that had to come from somewhere, right? Someone had to build that foundation that other people can thrive off of. Yeah. So, this is why I feel bad because at the end of the day, the like so like people some people because they always say do more and work yourself harder to gain more so that the people underneath you don't have to struggle as much your family your friends whatever your kids like you want them to have a better life than you have. When they have a better life than you have, they always go like, oh, well, you're so privileged. Y'all never know what it's like to struggle. That's the point. You want them to be, you, that's what y'all did. Y'all worked hard so they wouldn't have to, but now that they're not working as hard as you did, you have an attitude. It's like, no, 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 no. Because again, the the guy that works every day, 12-hour shifts, is a. it's not that he's poor. It's not that he's broke. It's not that the job he has, they're not paying enough. But he is working his ass off every day to support something, even if it's just himself. That man has a strong sense of character and spirit because imagine working 12-hour shifts day in and day out for very little money. Yeah. You would lose your goddamn mind because every decision you make affects your livelihood. You can't just buy a PS5 and be okay. You can't just buy a necklace and be okay. You can't even go out and eat good, big-budget food Without making the decision of, can I still afford to keep my lights on right now? And the thing is, I feel like about that is like when you're in like school, like high school, for instance, not middle school, of course, yeah. but high school. When you can work, you I, can feel, I feel like people should start working as soon as they get to high school. But then it takes away your high school experience and fun, really, because then it, it makes you have to be an adult. But then, yeah, realistically, life, life versus responsibility. <laughs> Because, like, when people say, oh, high school is the best years of my life, it's like, well, what do you mean by that? It's like, you partied a lot of time in high school. You didn't work, but you partied. Fair enough. But when you work, you don't have time to party because you're working. But see, those people also have cars early on because they saved up for it because they don't got no bills or nothing. It's like, well, what am I going to use this money for? I'm going to save you aside. I'm going to have see, some money for me for food, drinks, or whatever, enjoy myself. But I'm going to have some money set aside for this car. See, you know, see, that's the thing. I feel like people, like, as soon as they hit, like, freshman year, they yeah. should start working because if they save from freshman year to senior year without spending a dime, they be they'll loaded. literally be loaded. Yes, they have nothing to pay off, no they, bills. And no then money. once they go to college, yeah, they can pay off their own college by themselves. Yeah, because even if you made at least twenty thousand a year, that's eighty grand by the end of the four years, give or take. Because again, it's not like they're taxing you. We ain't got no bills to pay. What are you gonna do? And if you're working, you also get income tax. That's something we all get. But then what also happens when people work during high school, they start forgetting their grades. That's the, that's why it's... But it's, it's a, a work-life thing. Because you always have to still make time for your for school. Because, again, are you in school especially? You can't neglect it. Because here's the thing. What's the point of working if you get kicked out of school? Or you, you're filling all your classes? Because then... Everyone looking at me like, oh, you ain't graduate high school. You must be a dumb motherfucker. I don't want to hire you, yeah. dumbass. It's like, because again, a high school GED is the like least you can do for like education. Why the fuck we keep toasting when we do this? <laughs> mm. But at the same 
I always feel it helps to know people too when you're working. Like it doesn't matter how good your resume is, you might get done over by somebody else with a worse resume just because they happen to know the person that works there. Like it's good to have connections. Yeah, it's always good to have connections because you never know when you could actually get get something out of it. Especially if you don't take the opportunity, you'll be like, ah, oh, well. And then if somebody took the same opportunity as you, you're like, oh, well, then, then now See, I'm mad. Ever, my thing is like this, too. I know they say don't live life with regrets, right? You don't ever want to live your life with regrets. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if something happens that's out of your control, like you did all you could, you t- something just didn't go your way. That's not a regret. You did what you could. It's like, See, you now. just got like passed over for one reason or the other. It might not be a good reason. It might be a solid reason. It might be like, look, y'all both have the same kind of stuff, but they have more job experience. They got see, the job. Like, like, okay, I'm, fair enough. See, I'm, like, I'm, I'm the type of person it depends what kind of regret it is. Nah, I'm selfish as shit. I'm like, no, motherfucker. I'm busting my ass and give you my things over here. You're going to pass me up for this motherfucker. Fuck you. Bust see, along. now, like, I, I regret certain stuff, but it's like, don't. I feel like the main regret would have to be, like, like if you're messing with a girl and then go oh, and like, wise. Like, no like no not relationship but like a random girl like you okay. mess you messing with a random girl boom and you get her pregnant that is like a regret that like but now like if it's like a but see that that's also one that is like it's a responsibility thing then too because it's like if you messing with somebody and I mean messing with them for a bit like you might not be feeling them but if you feeling they in, you feeling the inside of them it's like look man. You willing to push yourself that far to get what you're trying to get with them? You also, to an extent, if not, especially if you're not being careful, have to be ready for any repercussions that might come with that. A disease, a kid, some other random bullshit that might be happening. It's like, look, man, you chose to put, like, they didn't force you to put yourself in them. You chose to put yourself in them. So at the end of the day, it is what it is, right? But, like, you have to be ready or at least not if you're not ready, you have to be willing to make the decision to be like, okay, I fucked up. I gotta take responsibility for it. Cause you wanna be that guy that's like, oh, I'm just gonna knock up women and just like, you know, go about my business. I'm, I'm just leaving that da, 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 boom. It seems crazy guys. So I, I saw a video kinda about that. It's like us as men, we we hunt, but we don't hunt for the wrong reason. We hunt to find the right person because it's like the only way for us to know the only way for us to experience or know who's the right one is to, really it really to, to go fit, through basically the, fish through the waters for the right fish yeah like we gotta go through different women to find our right match now, again i'm gonna be i'm gonna kind of play devil's advocate here a little bit like i know i'm saying that a lot i i, I have a lot of neutral stances on stuff my thing is like this like for instance like when my like when my dad t- like when my dad didn't tell you he's like you know, you got to date a bunch of girls to find the right one. I'm like, no, you don't. But at the same time, he's not. Like, because, again, I'm saying that from, like, a you don't got to be a player because that makes you look like an asshole kind of thing. It's like, I get what he's saying, though. You never know the right girl until you date the wrong one. But then vice versa, you know, you have to at least get out there to find them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's what, we get, that's what gets me sometimes. I'm like, he's not wrong. He is, like, I would say morally speaking, he isn't in the right because you don't got like I don't like the idea of a player, right? His name just because you know the game, just because you know women, or at least you. I, I never like that expression either. I don't like when guys say they know women. You don't know women. You know the women around you. See now, because not do you mean every, by every that? woman is because different. Like... Cause the game you kick to one girl won't work for another. And just because you could sleep with them or potentially try to sleep with them doesn't mean you're gonna connect it either. At the same time, they might be playing you, and you might not even know. You can get hustled out of a lot of stuff over the wrong woman. But like, I never understood when people say, "I get women." You don't get women; See, you now, get the women around you, which is a small percentage. Right, now, here's the thing: yeah, there is no getting women because every woman is different, like you just said. But but it's yeah, you know, it depends. Like like, there's only really two types of women mm-hmm. there's either women that want to go out there and make money by selling their body or there's other women that actually want to because again i don't necessarily because again i don't see it that way neither because like his thing people always say okay 
I because I've heard this argument a lot too. Like when people get on people that work on OnlyFans and that, yeah, I'm like, okay, fair. You don't have to pay for those women. Other people will pay for those women. And if those women make money, by all means, make your money. Fine. But you cannot back. I would say this: if you work on OnlyFans or whatever you do, right? You cannot bash the average Joe, the hardworking man that either pays for your stuff or likes you enough to pay for your stuff. Because you know, I, I, I'll kind of stop you there because now again, they don't have to give you money. Get that? But OnlyFans is like it's optional. I feel like they should never made that only because without OnlyFans, you know how many females. Or guys would be broke right now without OnlyFans. I know, I get that. But here's the thing: when I see people on OnlyFans being like, "Oh, hey, I just paid for a trip to the Bahamas. I'm over here dancing on this yacht. I'm having fun. I'm making like money hand over hand over fist, like hand over foot, like making mad money over this shit." I'm sitting there like, "Okay, look, I get it. People will pay because you're attractive. Wait, they you know attractive. Only they fans, want to see your stuff. You know OnlyFans are only for sex, right? Like you can no. do podcasts on it too. No, no." OnlyFans is for a lot of stuff, but what do people typically associate with in this day and age? Yes. Yeah, I know. You can use it for cooking, cleaning, tips, music. You can use it for so much stuff. What do people talk about usually when it comes to OnlyFans specifically? Yeah, sex usually. Now, when you think of stuff like Patreon, like yeah, Patreon, yeah, GoFundMe, um, Kofi or Coffee, so on and so forth. Like, yeah, that's looked at as like a content creator thing but when you think only fans typically people think of like sex which again if that's not what it's there for there's other things you can use it for but what do people typically associate with it now okay. which is unfortunate but that's just how it is and again nothing to i have nothing against men and women on only fans getting their money if people want to pay you for that shit by all means and make your pay Let's see but it's like but you cannot i would say this i will say this though you cannot bash the average man working a nine to five that chooses to send you money. You can't call them book. They are working the hardest to make a living. If they choose to send it to you, you I'm not saying you gotta suck their dick, but you gotta at least be like, you know, thank you. Don't 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 make fun of them because they broke. It's like, look, man. Here's the thing. The rich is a small percentage. The wealthy is a very small percentage. You cannot make See, money. Don't make money. The average man for being broke. They trying their hardest. Because me personally, but if like, they lazy as shit. That's on them. But like, goddamn, like, if they if they, they just, working, like if someone said to be rich or wealthy, honestly, I'm picking wealthy. As long because I'm 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 tired. Well, like, you can't. Wealth is something you can't get rid of. Rich like, is something you can fuck over immediately. Because wealthy, I just feel like I just want to be able to like when I have bills like. In my own house, like to know that I, I get paid off early and be fine. Uh, that's, think that's think about uh, you, you know the phrase longevity, right? How long something can last. Mm -hmm. Like when I was playing UFC three, it said like, "Hey, your longevity is like twenty years, right?" I stretched it to thirty because I was kicking ass so much. Unless I fought someone who was a submissionist, because I only lost like four times because I got tapped out and just fucked those people, right? It was on the story, man. But anyways, it's like. It's the same thing with like OnlyFans. Your body is what attracts people. That body does not last forever. You could work out, eat right, exercise, do whatever you want. That body will not last you forever. You can get surgeries or whatnot. It's not the same body. That body does not last forever. Your profits will not remain the same forever. It will eventually go down. Yeah. And what happens when you don't want OnlyFans? Let's say you have enough money to live comfortably. Cool. Not every woman that does OnlyFans is that lucky. I know a few friends of mine who do OnlyFans. I don't subscribe to them because they send me that shit for free. Mm, but no, like, no, I'm no. not going to be like, oh, let me uh, throw you a few. No. It's like, look, that's something you want to do? Cool. No, there's just one girl I know that's in Houston. Mind you, she's not even the baddest. She's not even, she's cool though, well, right? If you had to give her a number though, you say six, five, four, what? Mm -hmm. like, like physically, if you had to be honest. without Mind again, is no names. Mine is we have the same birthday. I thought you were okay. You, you gotta say I'm but saying like she you is, give her a number. If if I had to rate her, she gonna look up this random podcast and be like, "What the fuck? I know this nigga." Hold on. If, if I had to rate her, um, she would be a solid probably seven, but she makes ten k every month. But she's not even the best, right? She's not even like the baddest. She's consistent the, though. Yes, yeah, that, right. that that that's why. She's consistent and confident in herself. Yeah, that's, why, that's why she makes 10K. Oh, damn, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I know porn stars by accident. 
not because I chose to know them. I just happened to come across them. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I know one lady, right? Because I typed, I was looking up a girl from Tekken. I typed in her name wrong because I was like, how do you spell this again? And I ended up coming across this woman. Afterwards, I, I, I looked at her. I was like, oh, hey, she's kind of bad. She got some nice tattoos and everything. I kind of like looked up, looked up afterwards. I was like, oh, she, she, she's into that. Ooh, she does this. I did not know that. But she's still fine as hell. So I was like, I'm going to at least look her up on Instagram. And again, she still look good. I have not, nothing against her. But at the same time, I'm like, uh, I still feel weird because she does a certain thing that she do, but it's like, it is what it is. I ain't going to complain about that, you know. But one second. And we are back, ladies and gentle men, women, and, and fuck out of the joint. You good? See, now, like, now, what I want to ask is, how was your experience with the finally having a PS5. Finally having the PS5. I'll be honest with you. Oh, see, that'd be fucking with me. Um, I I do appreciate that I have the PS5. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I ain't hanging on all that. It's like, look, 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 here's what it is, right? But, like, I like that I got the PS5, but let's be real. I, I'm underwhelmed. Solely because I know the game system can be better. The only reason I got it at first was like, Okay, well, Spider-Man, I could play it off my cousin. Mortal Kombat, I could play it off my cousin. I didn't give a shit. I was like, it is what it is, right? But it's like, destroy him is too. I specifically need, uh, I need a PS5 for that. I can't do anything about that. Like, certain console exclusive games, it was like, oh, you need a PS5 for that. I'm like, the fuck? These are remakes and all this other shit? Like, what the fuck I need a PS5 for? No, like, what well, you need right now? I'm like, fuck all that. No, no, you need it. I'm like, man, this is some bullshit. And eventually, it's like, okay, fine. Destroy Humans 2, I need it for the game. Fine. Because I ain't played the first game, fine. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't played the first game. I'm going to be honest with you. I never played Destroy Humans 1. I did it. So I played it for the first time. I was like, okay, I'm surprised. It's good. This is funny. I enjoy this. When they said, oh, we're going to announce a sequel in the second game, I was like, well, I played it with my cousin. Y'all know how I know that game is a little bit fun. Yeah. Jokes or whatever aside, that game is fun. You could go on any map and just raise hell, right? Mm -hmm. Again, a blast. I've heard the sequel is still really, really good, but it was only on PS5. That's why I never touched it. I got PS5 now. I didn't touch it, but I don't know yet because I hate spoilers. Now don't get twisted. If I play a game before, I don't give a fuck. It's like, look, you can't spoil shit for me. I've already played it. Yeah. With Skyrim, for instance, I haven't played Dragonborn. I haven't played Dawn Guard. I know what happens because everyone in the mud talked about it when it first came out. But me personally, never spent it for myself. Yeah. Like Jane. Uh, go, sorry, apologies. But if you had to pick a game to play again for the first time to get the whole experience and everything, what would you play? Because mm -hmm. I already have a few examples, but I'll let you go first. Mm hmm. Dang, that's a hard one. Fighting game, sports game. Like, if you have to pick a game for the first time, even if it's a good memory, like, oh, I won the first time, this, that, and the other, like, what would you pick? I mean, I'll probably say Uncharted. Uncharted? Un Uncharted is one, one of the best See, games I ever played. That caught me off guard when I first played it because I played Uncharted 2 by accident. You wonder why? Because when I was going to my, like, not, don't ask why I was going to my dad's couch, but. I randomly went through his couch and I found the Uncharted 2 game and I was like, the fuck is all this? I asked my dad, but he's like, it's all right, it's all right. I played the game, I was like, oh, this is so much fun. Da, da, da. And later on, I was like, why did he try to hide it from me? But I guess I found out later on he just lost it. <laughs> like, he didn't know it was over there. That's why I caught it by accident. And by like, the oh, way, the, the best Uncharted. This is the one where Chloe he's a, is best girl. It is a is the one where he's a kid and he has to run away. I think that's the third game, I think. That's the No, um, that's the that's it might the, be the fourth, the like recent one. No, that's the um the first one. Is it the I never played I played the second the first and the one third. the first one when he when he's a little kid and he has to run away. 
Well, it, 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 okay. Uh, I think it's the first one or the second one is my favorite though, where, where he steals the um the ring and then he has to run away. It might be. That might be. Uh, that's the first one. The first one. Yeah, the first one's my favorite. No, the second one I know specifically has a crazy voodoo animal monkey things. Yeah. And Chloe. Chloe is like best girl. She's so awesome. And I know the voice actor too. He's kind of uh, my my favorite. Yeah. I and think Uncharted is one of the best games I ever played. No, Uncharted is a really good. You, no, no, you know what really fucked with me? Which one? To, a game you used to play? You remember PlayStation All Stars Better Way Out? Mm hmm. It was like, we, like, Lil Philip would play Dante, you would play, like, Nathan Drake and a few other people, and I'd be sitting there playing Kratos, Sly Cooper, and all this other stuff. I'm sitting there, like, this is some bullshit. Like, how come I gotta beat your ass to have a possibility to? Possibly hit you before I fuck up and like miss. But again, I think that was part of the game's charm. It's like, cause y'all be like, we be playing and shit. They be like, oh, let's double team. Let's go double team him. It's like, y'all gonna jump me? Oh shit! All right, let's get. Oh, ah, <laughs> like, I think it was fun because it's like y'all can pick sides on the fly. And be like, well, we don't want this motherfucker to win. Fuck him. Let's jump. Hey, Second, we all become even. It's like, okay. But now one of us has to win. It's crazy because I, I, I would talk Philip into in I used to get so time. mad at that bullshit because I used to get like, say, man, he's going to betray you. How the fuck you going to keep joining his side when well, we got to beat you? But you got to beat him too. Why you guys on me? Yeah, at, yeah, I would try to explain to him, let's help, let's help him get you I out. I get so goddamn pissed at y'all because y'all let's jump. <laughs> And then, and, and then I would just RKO him or, or... Oh, no, no. You're taking a W. No, no. Oh, no. Actually, wait, wait. No. This, no. this is a good topic, though. WWE 19. Come on. I never get my crawl to you. The uncle broke it up. Because he didn't know what was going on. <laughs> no. We played the, this is before my dad figured out what was going on. But we used to play the Elimination Chain matches. I got dropped one time. And because, like, Gup over here was low on stamina... He like hit with the move. He fell over, and then my dad, who was also in the match, was like watching him. He crawled over to me with no stamina, threw the arm over, like, yeah. and he was like, one, two, and we broke the pin. Like, what the fuck? Like, I didn't crawl over. He crawled halfway across the ring just to pin me, and I was like, nigga, what? <laughs> and but that's then, when everything went down here. But wait, 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 but I don't remember who won. It's probably you. Because, like, the way it always worked, me and my folks and everyone else was like, look, if you good at the game, you good at the game, right? No, no, if you know a home just a butt. But if you whoop it, everyone else's ass, everyone, like, we're going to jump you. It's like, all right. See, but also. It looked like you, look like you doing okay. Oh, well, no, fuck over your head real quick. Bop, see, bop, but, bop. but Uncle most of the time would win because, like, we know we could beat him on one, okay? Like, we would whoop each other, and then he would whoop one of us after we got whooped. But it got to the point where he got, I'm not going to say good enough, but, like, he got to competent enough to where he was like, okay, I can handle myself. Yeah. But we always looked at him like a second fiddle thing. Like, because at the end of the day, it's like, look, if I'm fighting somebody, the real challenge is going to be you. Vice versa, when you say that, the real challenge is going to be me. Yeah. Because we've gone back and, like, no, 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 no bullshit, regardless of what we're talking about right now. We have gone back and forth. I've beaten you one on one. You've beaten me one on one. Yeah, you might have beat me on the best of three, but you know I am still a viable threat against you. Yeah, it's usually me and you. Yeah, so it's like okay, one of us needs to get out first for whatever reason. But at the same time, it's like look, if it's all three of us, ain't no favors out here. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna attack everybody. But at the same time, it's like look, man. Oh, did you just hit me? Sound like you ready to get see, like whoop. Yeah, but see, the thing that will make Uncle win most of the time is when me and you. Huh. Look at that. Oh, wait, this part of our arms. Or like the. Um, but where's my fart? I don't know, it's like 4 30 right now. Oh, my phone. 432, I guess. My phone right here. Oh, no, my phone's good. 
Oh, well, it's probably here though, with that thing, the rest of whatever. My man, continue. What are you saying? Well, I was saying, um, like, if it's me and you, it's going to be a battle. Because again, when it's, when it's like well, see, that's people, what gets me too, because like, we never say when we meet you, we're just going to fight. We're going to be like, either we're going to do this tournament right now, me and him right now, both me and Gup, gets the tournament right now. We're going to fight the 100 of the computers. But then we'll be like, now nah, we're gonna fight one on one. We're gonna do best of three. Let's get it. And we'll be all over the backstage area. We're gonna do it, fighting with weapons and everything. We're gonna have fuck. We're gonna fuck each other up. It's gonna be like, all right, cool. And at the end of it, it's gonna be like, all right, me and you, one on one in this ring, fight now. Only one of us gonna win. Come on, because again, we've had some good ass matches against each other. Not even with all characters, just like with whoever we was using. And then like you're, you're. The only person that would know what I want to do in a match. Because I fought you so many times. Again, I've used like Undertaker, Triple H, The Rock, El Mago, everybody. But at the same time, you've used Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. Like, you use so many people. I'm like, all right. Dean Ambrose. I'm like, all right. I have a counter for that because I fought you so many times. But then vice versa, some people might not have. So now I got to take them into account. Because again, I always say this. It doesn't matter who you pick me. But once you embody the spirit of that person you're using, you can't lose. Yeah. If I say, I'm El Mago, and I'll be running to the ring like, oh, you got El Mago. His move is not even called the El Mago. It's called like the flying like, elbow attack or whatever the fuck it's called. But I'll be like, you got El Mago. Yeah. And I'm so happy about it. Like, I pass off the spirit of El Mago just by being hyped for his shit. And I'm like, yeah. And I'll be getting y'all too, because like, I'll be winning with that shit, and I'm like, okay, oh my god! See, when I get hype in WWE, it's only because, like, when I get the little, uh, that little, like, oh, what is it? It's like the little, that uh, little burst of adrenaline? Yeah, that, that adrenaline, we press triangle circle, and then you got, you got to hit him against the ropes, and then. Oh, the comebacks? Yeah, the comebacks, yeah. No, and no, no, because Jane, no, no, no. Oh, good. sorry about that, but like, no, nah, you be real hype when you're playing WWE, you're like, once you get like when you playing John Cena, once you get in the zone, you be into it. You don't be talking, you don't be doing nothing. You be like, "Oh, I got my signature now. You out, bitch. Move over." What you gonna yeah. do? Come on, King See, Slay. It is crazy. Right it is crazy because like yeah. when I'm John Cena, it's like I have to win. It's because like, again, like win. like not talking about his career or whatever. It's like because years ago too, when you picked like because everyone in the family knew, or at least the people that play with you. Say you picked John Cena, that was it. That that, that was all. Like, you couldn't do shit bad. It's like, when you pick John Cena, you got serious. You're like, you ain't got serious? Oh, shit. So I'm like, we got to get ready to wrestle. The longest match I remember, I was Undertaker, like the American badass. My dad, I think, was um, Kevin Nash. And mm-hmm. you were here, Seth Rollins or John Cena. But we just kept hearing each other signatures, finishes. We all just kept kicking out. It got to the point where it was like, Nigga, this is like over 30 minutes to put in the <laughs> bullshit. Like, we over here trying to, like, finish this out. You over here, oh, I'm good now. Get the fuck off me. It's like, you gotta hit you with the finisher and the signature. How you gonna kick out? Because I said I, 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 I never forget when, when it was you and Dami and, uh, or no, I think it was you and Uncle. But y'all, uh, I think Philip got out or Dami got out. And it was just me and I was kicking out everything. Yeah, we just get hanging with singles to finish. Like, this nigga kick out of everything. Super kick. Pedigree. Spine buster. D- 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 we hit you with everything. Uh-huh. We're like, you know, stop kicking out. Hey, hey, man. Nope. All right, yeah. How about now? And it's crazy because that's why I got the. Uh... You can't claim that the kick out, man. It's like, hey, man. You went out the kick out, man. You got lucky. <laughs> I like no, 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 no. The reverse master. That's oh, why. Oh, you thought you said the reverse master. Yeah. Like, hey, man. The, the kick out. The kick out would be off and on, but the yeah, reverse hey, master. Coming up, coming I'm, up, I'm yeah. good at reversing for sure. Of reversing is too easy for me. Well, no, I got to that point too. Where it was like, look, man, I don't care where you reverse. If we don't get you out, we don't get you out. If you want to keep fighting, you will eventually fuck up your pants. <laughs> That is true. Nah, but the thing that that kind of blew me was the finish and the signatures, like like, like when you knew when the, when they were coming. Yeah, that's why I, I cut them off after a while because it's like, hey man, look, 
we said chilling, we still do what we're doing, but like we don't want to see in advance, like, hey, this finish it, this finish it, da, da, da. it's like. But I appreciate it because, like, it gives you a little bit more variety. It's like, because you never know when the computer has it. So if they fuck you over, or vice versa, you know they was ready for one, and then he's ready, it's like, oh shit, now I gotta kick out, or now I gotta do this and the other. It's like, yeah. But at the same time, it's like, look, man, you wanna drink? Right. We still got some Long Island. We on there? Oh, yeah. Let's cut the line up. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's all, it's all coin. Yeah, right. don't act like we ain't doing what we're doing. You know, I get it. We live. Don't judge us. Bitch. No, I'm sorry. We can go on. That's crazy that you been, um, wait, one cup's over. Wait, wait. I, no, I already got like five stories, like, like I said before. Well, mine's out. That's what I'm saying. Drink this for a second while I get my drink. It's okay. over here somewhere. Oh, so we're here. No, it's not. Huh? But, again, my thing is this. I enjoy these conversations. Right there. Yeah. I enjoy a little bit of drink between me. Because, again, like I said before, you are one of the few people I feel like I can consult with about certain things. Because you don't judge me, we just talk. Yeah. I feel like I didn't talk to you about anything. I might have my facility in there, but I think it's going to be a good luck. Oh, you ain't even toast me? No, we feel so toast right now. I mean, let's be real. This shit going to hurt like a motherfucker, but like, let's be real. It's going to, we don't drink it still. Go <laughs> ahead. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, that needs some lime. <laughs> Again, that's why that was second after the whiskey. Though. That is strong as hell. Yeah, I know. That's why it was second after the whiskey because I know we're going to have drinks. You alright? Yeah, I'm good, but that's just strong as hell. Yeah. Okay, let's take that one a bit slow, okay? Actually, while we're over here talking about uh, slow stuff, because we can still talk about it, we did start with the concept of Scooby Doo movies, right? Mm-hmm. Back in the day. We sure did. Because we talked, we were talking about the old school ones. And obviously, you know all the jokes and your windows, everything that came with the old school movies, right? Like, you know, yeah. Fred was like, oh, I can look at myself naked. Do, 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 right? Yeah, and then, they're like, they kept showing off, like, Velma and her big tit, uh, 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 nice body type and all that good stuff, right? And so like, hey, and the funny thing is, you know the um lady who was like Shaggy's love interest, the lady who says like my name is like Mary Jane. I kind of remember, yeah. The the blonde bitch, or, or the blonde lady. Sorry about that. Oh yeah. She said my name is Mary Jane, and Shaggy says that's one of my favorite things because back in the original script of the movie, Shaggy was supposed to be a stone. Him and Scooby. Mm-hmm. Which is why I was like, Mary Jane, symbolism for weed, was supposed to be like the best shit ever. It's like, okay, well, this is my concept in the story, blah, 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 blah. It was supposed to be, we are the shit, blah, 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 here's your thing. He was like, oh, I love Mary Jane, because he's supposed to be a pothead. Yeah. Right? But, they changed it at the last second, so like, she's just a random name, right? <sighs> Same thing when, like, you remember when the, uh, in the, First movie, uh, thing on the phone says, "Hey, can I look for Scooby Doo?" Blah blah blah, and a voice calls him out to the woods. It's supposed to be for weed, but it changed later on to like hamburgers. Yeah, I remember you saying that, but like that's actually how it was supposed to go. That was the original script because the movie was supposed to be like rated R or whatnot, but they changed that at the last second. That's why there's a lot of adult jokes in the movie. That, like, I guess kids wouldn't pick up on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But, I think it's something interesting, though. You remember when we used to watch uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? You know, Scooby Doo, uh, Looney Tunes back in action, Looney Tunes Space Jam, and whatnot? Yeah. Now, what's your favorite movie? Mm. That's a tough one. Now, here's, oh, uh, okay. We're not going to talk about nostalgia yet. We're going to go from, like, order. And we'll talk about it from there. If you had to pick a favorite three between 
Looney Tunes back in action. Looney Tunes Space Jam. And who from Mr. Rabbit? Who would be the top three? Probably, uh, the first one would be Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Why do you consider that, like, why do you like that the most, if you want me to ask you? That one just caught my eye more, and a lot more happened in that one. Fair enough. Alright, who are you next to? Uh, Between who, like, Space Jam and Looney Tunes back in action? I would definitely pick now my second one would definitely be Space Jam. The one with Michael Jordan. Yeah. And then yeah. And the one with LeBron James didn't really catch my eye. See, but it was I was the, thinking about that whole for a while, but I, I was thinking of it as like a new generation. So I, see, I yeah, that's I why understand. I thought about it too, that's why I didn't watch it because I was like, I don't know where it is yet in the like series like I love the original, but at the same time, in my mind, I'm like, in my heart of hearts, I'm like, this ain't the best movie. Because LeBron, LeBron James got two movies. Though. Yeah. He has LeBron one, James he has carries a, that movie to an extent. Because there's one movie with LeBron James that I actually really like. Oh, it's called, like, House Party. It's, it's called, like... Oh, shit. I know that movie, though. Which one? House, House Party? Party. Wait. Did you see that one, though? No, they made a remake of it recently with, like, LeBron James and shit, too. Yeah. It's like when he comes home and then he's like, what the... Yeah, because there's yeah. people in his house throwing the party. Yeah. yeah, see, that one was actually a great movie. No, they actually. made an old one back in the day, too. They made a few movies kind of like House Party, too. Because they had, like, Kid and Play and, like, a few other people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mal- Malibu's Most Wanted was another one, I think, too. Yeah, that's also one. Yeah, right? Yeah. I can hear you. <gasps> yeah, it's just hiccups. Yeah. But, yeah, see that. That's also one. Um, you have to think of a good comedy that is your no, not just called a uh, cartoon and then comedy. If you had to pick one, like because again, I need to say Space Jam. What was your first one now? Uh, wait, wait, like besides Space Jam's, yeah, comedy, yeah, cartoons uh, and stuff. Shoot, so I said, Looney Tunes back in action, Space Jam, any sort of cartoon you can think of back in the day. What be your go to movie that you will watch as a child at any point when it came on? Movie, uh, not cartoon and TV show. Movie for like when you were younger. Uh, I can think of a few, but I'll give you a couple of three. We definitely have to make it us. Yeah, but what movie? A uh, movie, uh, Prior High School Musical. Oh, that's a good one. See, that's what I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm really biased. My baby says the vampire was one. Um, I like that one. To go on Camp Rock, the original, mm-hmm. the first one. And I'm gonna be 100. Can I be honest with you for a second? Which one? It was a toss up. Cheetah Girls, <laughs> Halloween Town. I like Halloween Town a lot. Again, or Sky High. Mmm. See now, I love three. That's kind Again, of a hard one. I like that for different reasons. Halloween Town was super creative. Sky High was just fun. Like, that, that movie was the shit. Like, you know what happened at the end where it was like, oh, I can't help but watch it. Oh, God. Oh, that's it. Oh. That's a hard one. Like, it's like, you want to be upset with it to an extent, but like, the, like you want to be mentally, like, challenging, but you're just kind of just like, nah, my. Yeah, it's like, mmm. That's a good. That's a good one though. All right, we gotta talk about like old school, like Disney Channel, all right? All right. We gotta talk about old school, old school, not new ones, but old school Disney Channel movies. Sky High. Um. Uh, what's the one with Kyle Massey? Uh, dog. We has to get a dog for like the dog pound. Yeah. All right, Sky High, the one with the dog. Um. Or uh, uh, Air Buddies. Or Air, Air Bud, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. what's the one about the spot? Agent Cody Banks. Mm-hmm. That's another one. Um, and then High School Musical. And like a, a few of the other, like Disney Channel. We, no, 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 no. Not even based Jesse? on the, No, not even based on the original TV episode or whatnot. Disney Channel original movie. So Let It Shine or the other ones. Like, so Let It Shine, Hannah Montana. Uh, no, not Hannah Montana. 
it can't be based on the original Disney series. So no Hannah Montana, no like, no like Casey on the cover, no Ant Farm, no whatever. Like it has to be in the Disney Channel specifically original movie. Mm-hmm. So like Camp Rock, um, push it to the limit. Uh, no, Let It Shine. No, no, Lemonade Mouth. Uh, what's the one about Double Judge with the boxer? Oh, uh, push it, push it to the limit, limit. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, push it to the limit. the name of this movie, though. Holes. Um, yeah, that's another one. Yeah, watch your dog, dog, dog. Tycho, what's his name? What's the name of the movie? Don't worry, it has Kyle Massey. You know what I'm talking about, though, right? I'm probably I'm pretty, I'm pretty Jewish. Oh, yeah. And we are back. Sorry about that. <laughs> I forgot what we were talking about. Well, I think we should get into what our favorite Scooby Doo movie is. Oh, right, right. Our main topic of the day. So. Fun fact, or fact if you know me a little bit, because I like to talk a little bit. Um, my my friend here, cousin, whatever you want to call him, Gug, is like, hey, you know. I told him before, I was like, hey, let's watch the old school Scooby Doo movies, you know, the one with Matthew Lillard and all them, like the early 2000s. He's like, okay, fine, but let's watch the later on 2000s one, because that was the one, like, that was on Culture Network. The funny thing was, though, I didn't know. Those were the only ones he saw. He never saw the original live action ones that I saw growing up. Because I used to watch the shit out of those movies growing up. And ironically, I never saw the recent ones. Like, I saw a little bit of the first one, but not really. It was like the first 15 minutes. And I heard they were making a sequel. So I was like, oh, this must have been good enough to get a sequel. Yeah, that was like they were contractually obligated. You know how it is, right? So he was like, tell you what. We'll watch yours, then we'll watch mine to go in order. We watched the first two Scooby Doo movies that I told him about, and then vice versa. He watched me and him watched the next two Scooby Doo movies afterwards, and it was like, "Oh damn, these are both really, really fun," you know, in their own way. Ain't that right? <laughs> Ain't that right? That's facts. All right, so let's start from uh, the beginning. You remember the beginning, right? You know, Daphne gets kidnapped. They go in that little factory, and they got the whole plan set up, and then you kind of see all the characters, right? You see Velma. You see Daphne, Scooby, Shaggy, all of them, right? Mm-hmm. To take out the ghost. What did you think about the first part of that movie that you saw? Mm-hmm. You know, where they got the plan set up, the plan goes awry, and then you got Shaggy and Scooby, like, you know, skateboarding through everything while all these traps are going off behind them while Fred and all of them are trying to capture the ghost that has Daphne. Does it feel like an early 2000s movie to you? Or is it kind of just like, okay, it's a bit extra? It feels like... I would say it's a little bit extra, but... For back in the day? Yeah, for back... But I feel like that's how the role, the role is supposed to be, realistically. Yeah, I, see. Because, again, my thing was like this, too. It's like, the movie came out... You were still really young at the time, so I'm because again, I'm not trying to be like, oh, back in my day kind of thing, but like, this is gonna sound a bit weird, but when it comes to talking to you or any of like the family, it's like if you're like a few years younger than me, I feel weird talking to y'all because it's like it feels like a like I'm in the twilight zone because y'all y'all have random lingo, dialect, some stuff I can't pick up on, and it's just kind of like, oh, well, it means this, this, and this. It's like, uh. I guess I didn't think about it that way, but at the same time, I never would have. Like, yeah, understandable. So when I show you this movie, because again, I like '90s cartoons. I like the anime cartoons. I like the old school Scooby Doo, where it's like, hey, this is the villain. By the end of the episode, we are master villain. You know. See, the thing is that that I don't like. Well, Scooby Doo is that they end up revealing the guy that they obviously solved the mystery for, but it's like sometimes 
you can always solve the mystery. I wish sometimes like it took him oh, a like while. Oh, like it was a cliffhanger, like oh, we actually don't know who did this yet, kind of thing. Yeah, I wish it was always like that. Now, see, the only argument I would have for that, to an extent, would be like because it was a Saturday morning cartoon. It was like, hey, you know, like it was a weekly thing. Every week we got a new villain. Then we with a mask. I'm like, hey, there's a random uh, abominable snowman scaring off customers. Then they, at the end of the episode, they find the customer and they're like, oh, old man Jenkins. And then they would say why he did what he did. And then he'd be like, oh, I, I would have gotten away with it. What for you meddling kids? Right. That, if you that, notice, that's how the TV shows were. It was like, hey. If you notice, it was always about the kids. It was never about anything else. Well, that was, yeah, they were the central point. It was like, hey, look, this but is I the enemy. Like... We got to have a plan for him, gang. We take him down. He's like, because again, it was a Saturday morning, specifically the last word cartoon. Yeah. Now I'm not gonna say cartoons are only for kids, but back in the day, that was what they were tailored to: it was kids and young adults. They'd be See, like, hey, but I also feel like or tweens, as it were, right? Like I feel like because most of the enemies said it because they were jealous of something, or because the they kids, wanted money or something, yeah, right? or because the kids. Kids. it's like sometimes it could have been for some other reason, like the way they grew up or, but I mean, by understanding it, cause like it's a cartoon show. Well, so yeah, I understand you, you why. You don't want to go that in depth. Like you don't want to be some shit like, Oh, I was abused and raped as a child. So I want to output my hatred on the world onto these people. It's like, no, 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 no. Like Scooby-Doo should, or I say should, would typically, at least the old school ones, would not go that far and be like, Oh damn, that's so relatable. Let me do that. It's like, no, no, no. I want to scare all the people from this park so I can collect the treasure and be rich. Like that—that that was how simple it used to be. But the reason I say I like it so much is because simple, but it worked. Because that's all you need back in the day for a cartoon. This is the villain. These are the heroes. You want them to succeed at the end. They catch the villain. Boom. On to the next adventure. It was like a storybook. Open up a new story every time, like a pop book. Open it up, new story. Close it. Open it up again, new story. See, and not trying to switch the topic, but of course, there's this thing I saw cereal boxes, right? Yeah, when you're little as a kid, and like if you notice the the the, the covers with like faces at least, mm -hmm. they're like always lucky looking, and stuff. yeah, like they're always looking down, but it's for the kids, like, and you know, if you notice. Lucky Charms and all that, so like that, it's always at the bottom yeah. for the kids. That's and where the, the that's where yeah. the toys and the prizes and, all and that then stuff. the adult stuff. There's no like, there's no there's cover. no hints. There's no that. There's no hints. It's just a picture of the actual whatever it is. Yeah, and it's like it's all the top is just for adults. At the bottom, it's for the kids. If you notice, they're all looking down. Yeah, because it would be either the eyes would say like this is a prize at the bottom, or there's a there's a code you could put in to lead you to a prize or so on and so forth. Or they like, say the really? eyes the eyes are supposed to get the kids' attention to get that cereal box. But again, that comes with everything though. It's the same thing with like TikTok. You wanna know why TikTok is so short? Because you need a short amount of time to grab people's attention, especially little kids, because they their eyes are all over the place. If you can do something that goes snaps their attention in the place, like hey, I saw that. I saw that looking out, focusing on it, boom, 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 like a little star pattern. Boom, bam, boom, bam, bigger low, right? Yeah. Again, same thing with like WWE when I was younger. You know what I used to focus on a lot? Because again, I'm childish and horny because I'm young, right? Yeah. All my panties matches. Again, I don't get it twisted. I like Tori Wilson, Stacey Keebler, Sable, Trish Trash, Ashley. I like all the old school divas, right? Yeah. But I know there's a specific reason. I'm going to take this one. <laughs> don't look at me. I bought these motherfuckers. But <laughs> oh, you bought these for her? Look at the side. You see a little tag on them? It's because that's my name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I that's, that's crazy. You took the last one. Did I? My bad. Yeah, you good. But, like, here's the thing. While I do like them, for the most part, I know a good chunk of them were only there to be eye candy, right? Yeah. Because back in the day, wrestling was about the male wrestler. It was like, hey, Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, Macho Man Randy Savage. And you could be like, oh, well, they were managers too. Did they really manage like that? Hmm. But again, I would not bash them because 
I'm biased as shit. I was like, no, they were fine as hell back in the day. I ain't gonna complain about that. Bikini contest, buddy wrestling matches. I like younger, my whole mind was like, whoop, 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 like a fucking monkey. I was like, oh damn, they fine as hell. You know what's crazy? Because back then, it's like, skin, right, that was acceptable. Skinny girl, then. yeah, skinny girls were the main topic. Like, who cares if some, they had booty? Tall, or, slender, yeah, nice that, bodies. That's and, all that mattered. Um, as long had, as they had a pretty face, really. Pretty face, yeah, but they also had a because again, like I said, Stacey Keebler is a tall, slender woman. She doesn't have the biggest ass, she doesn't have the biggest taste. But again, her main selling point for her was them legs. And she would flaunt them all the goddamn time because she knew that was her like bread and butter. That was her gravy. And don't get twisted. I like the older divas too, especially Tori Wilson. But like because again, my friend I have a friend who's still in the wrestling. He's still big into us. He'll show me every like now right, right now? Yes. He'll show all divas, new divas, people from AEW, so on and so forth. And I, first thing I think of is like, wait, wait, wait. Let me get this straight. So you don't want to do bikini contests, brawn pants matches, all that stuff, because you don't want to be sexy and everything. Okay, cool. Like, you don't want to objection, like, objectionalize the women, make them all, like, objectify. Let me rephrase that. You don't want to objectify the women, make them all sexualized and stuff. Cool. How come every girl you bring in the WWE now has, or AW or whatever wrestling brand you bring in, why do y'all got a fat ass? Like, that's the most noticeable thing. They'd be, like, they'd be dressing normal, but they had, like, the tight shorts on, and then all that would be hanging out. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, very progressive, but goddamn, that's distracting. That's crazy, because they know what they're doing now. So see, that's or now, at least. Because yeah. back then, you know, it's like... No, no, no. You know what the funny thing about that, too, is? Like, even when companies or, like, when brands or whatnot, when they try to remind us, it's like, it's like okay, we don't want to be based on the stuff of all. We don't want to sexualize our women. We want to use this, that, and the other. We don't want to give them big chests, big titties. We want to make them all crazy sexy, right? Mm-hmm. The first thing they would do immediately after they say that is give them fat asses. So people online will be like, well, God damn. Why are, man, they didn't put all that cake in that bakery. Ooh. And you know what's crazy? Like, they know what they're doing. They're like, we took up but the people, top to put on the bottom. But people noticing like asses and all that didn't start until twerking got it into. Oh, yeah. Until, yeah. until people started twerking, then it was like, oh, well, maybe I want something like that. Or I want something that's much bigger. You know what I mean? Because I've had if, to argue with if, people if, that twerking if, is not dancing. If, but twerking, it is. if twerking ever got it into. Dude, and, and here's the thing like, it relation, like is based on back the then, dance, like, but not that, really. But like back then, the goal was to like growing up as a kid. The goal, the goal was to like oh, whoever, like whoever girl, you, the pretty in the face, no matter if she's skinny or not. Boom. As long as she's beautiful. yeah, as long as she's beautiful, you date her, y'all get married, you have kids, and then boom, it's the next life. But now in the generation, you it's got like, it. It's oh, like you got yeah, it. Man. Yeah, it's like she has to be like she has to be top tier. Or at least you got to have something worth looking at. It, it, it might be like, she got big. Because again, even, even like, again, I, I don't want to be like this, but when I talk to my dad, right? I can tell him I went, I can be like, oh yeah, I went to this girl, I used to from high school. We were talking about life, this, that, and the other. Like, see how she's doing? Like, I ain't seen her forever. It's so cool to see her again. First thing the motherfucker was like, you got a big booty? It's like, nigga, even if she did, you ain't never met this bitch in her life. And guess what? She was underage at the time anyway. So like, even if she did, what the fuck are you gonna do if she did? Like, See, when that, when that's because like, of generation. Why, why, you ask why can't you just say like, "Hey, was she nice?" Why you ask if she got a big booty? You, you See, gonna look. And he would never ask that if it you wasn't just. You would never know who she was. If it wasn't this time, how it is now, he he would have never asked that. And again, he always makes a joke about Friday. Like, oh, you know, you don't look at her booty before. I'm like, that's not why you asked. He wasn't asking to make that Friday joke. He was just asking. Yeah. What, was I gonna, what if I said yes? Then what? And you were asking if I got a picture of her. Yeah. That you would just kept going. Shut, shut, shut your ass up. Like, I love you. Shut up. Shit. But again, that's just my thing. It's just like, it be it be messing with me sometimes because like, I be seeing how people be acting or I see how people be thinking. It's like, I get what you're saying. Calm down. Because it always hits one side or the other when it comes to this stuff. Like, even Scooby-Doo. Do you think we could have made the original Scooby Doo back in the day the way we saw it when we watched it, right? Do you think we could have made that as it is now? 
Mm. No, I feel like it would be different. Very much so. Right? I feel like people wouldn't like it though. Because be now be it's just dope, like it. it's just like if you compare movies to then and then movies now. Well, okay, actually, well, no. Well, here's the thing: movies now, since we have more stuff that we can actually do and put into movies, yeah. That's what makes the movies more better. But what, what we're well, used to, what we're used to, like in general, like, but like here's the thing: is see, and and this is the thing when I was talking about graphics, like in PS Five, yeah. Graphics now, right, are right. insane. Well, but that's but that, that's not what gets us. Also, in a movie, we're used to being like like a movie just being normal and like going along with the story, and then boom, and then like two main characters and. Then, Shit happening now is just like, and now it's just like, there has to be great graphics. There has to be this one main character that's, See, that, that's phenomenal. Crazy. Like graphics don't make a game because again, people always look at the example of like, oh, Finance of Freddy, Minecraft. Like this thing, the reason Minecraft worked wasn't because the games were because again, the graphics could have been all like amazing and the game could have been ass, but. The gameplay was solid, simple. The game was solid, and it was simple. You could do this, that, and the other. The only reason it got crazy was because people realized this gameplay is simple, but there's some creative shit we can do with it afterwards. Like, they made the game famous yeah. just because of what they could do on that simple premise. Games don't have to be crazy, advanced, crazy, kind of... Like, again, I told you before, I brought up Skyrim. I played Skyrim, right? So much you can do in that game. But there's still so much more you can always do in that game just because how the game is. You can make it cheap. You can cheese it. You can have whatever fun you want to do. But like at the end of the day, you know that it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. And same thing, Scooby-Doo. You can make it as crazy as you want. People have done it before. They made, they've made crossovers. They made movies. They made comic books about it. It's like, look, they made a post-apocalyptic Scooby-Doo comic book. I bullshit you not. Scrappy Doo was like on steroids. It looked nuts, but it was like crazy. But at the end of the day, it's like the imagination for a product only goes as far as the mind does. You can play it safe, you can keep it simple. Sometimes you want to branch out and do something different. And sometimes that's what it takes to like. Connect with people, like people See, will resonate and, with that and, shit. And, and the thing is, like, I don't know, everything's just difficult. So it's like, you you don't you, realistically, you don't ever know if you're making the right decision. You won't know until it's done. You won't ever know until it's done. But like, even even when you see progress, and you're like, okay, this could be my career. Yeah. But then when stuff start going downhill, you're like, whoa, what happened? It's like, well, maybe that was never your career, but just because it went well, you thought that was your career, but yeah, but that wasn't. See, the, and that's where a lot time, of people bad, get mixed not, up. One at. bad day does not equate your whole like thing. If you put your time, effort, and money into something, it's because you believe in it, or at least you believe you can do well in it. See, one and, bad and, time yeah. does not equate your whole career, though. See, I, I say it was like a like let's say you make one flop and then you're just done. You don't think you can make a hit? Well, you make a hit right after that. Then what? See, you know, that's true. But I'll say that whole week has just been bad. Mm. That's where you think of it as like, well, it was going good. This is something I was good at. But what is something I'm really good at that I don't know of? Uh, it, like try, try, and you try, try, and try until you figure out what you can excel at. Yeah, because there's, I don't like, because like, like YouTube for, for like YouTube, right? Like, yeah. like you stream and all that. Uh huh. But you don't know for sure, like if that's what your career or if that's what you're actually good at, because there could be something else that you don't know of that you're actually extremely good at and nobody knows of. Like I could be good at something else. True. But so I, but I don't know what it is because I never even tried it or even done it. That's a lot of things with a lot of people though, because. There's a lot of stuff we haven't tried or done to even know what it's, our well, where strength it's is. Two things. It's fear and comfortable like not comfortability, but like complacency. Yeah. Because if you're comfortable with something, why would you change? You have no reason to. 
Mm. God damn, you fucking alcoholic shit. I'm over here trying to like sip my shit. You can't <laughs> even five goddamn seconds. And then there's this one thing that I saw. It was like, um, you have to move to get a different environment, right? Like, you have to move to get a different environment, right? Well, it can be costly for some people. See, yeah, no, I get that. But it's like, he said, move to a different environment. And um, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be different from there. Because as long as you stay in the same, like, where you grew up at, it'll be the same thing repeatedly. Yeah, but if you move, but if you move, but if you move somewhere else. You'll get a different environment and a different feeling and different but motivation. Yeah, I can respect why when people like are staying with somebody, they're like they want to move out. It's like, yeah, it's not that you don't like the people around you. It's like sometimes you want to change your pace or you want a different environment just so you can see where you can truly grow, test yourself, and go from there. Like, you want to see like, hey, I want to see a little. I'm not saying the grass is green on the other side, but I want to see this other little pasture over here. I'm enjoying myself, but. I want to see what they got a little bit off of them. Maybe I can expand, grow, you learn know. from that. And again, that's why I like talking to people that have traveled a little bit. Maybe seen some things. Yeah. Like, I have a friend who specifically makes D- Dungeons and Dragons characters. And every time I talk to him about an idea, he gives me a new idea to work with. I'm like, you know what? I ain't thinking about it like that yet. Let me uh, workshop this. Because so on and so forth. There's always something you can add to someone else's story. And it's it's crazy because, like, this, like, mm, like, past, for instance, right? Like, yeah. like, God, like, he has a path for you. It's crazy because when you try to make your own path, it's messy but, but then you got to think of, like, that's not really, you're not making that path on your own. God already had that for you. But at the same time, if it's a path you create. But that's what people say, at least. God yeah. made that for but you. But if it's a path that you also create, though, would you really equate that path you made yourself to God? Because if you're trying to stray yourself from his path, is that still a path that he made for you to follow? Or is it just kind of like... See, and and, and here's, what I, here's what I like to think about. Because it's like, of course. If, if God made that path for me, why can I make that that path for myself? Why does See, he have to make again, that for me? They always say God makes everything before you do because he, he predates everything. He knows everything. So my thing is like this. Okay, cool. If he makes everything, then he should know every path I make, even if I choose to change my path. At the last second, every other second in between, he should know what I'm doing before I do it because he already knows, right? But why does he have different paths for those that he... Because again, if he knows... Because again, if you're a good person, you go to heaven. If you're a bad person, you go to hell, right? Mm-hmm. So if he knows what path you're going to do and knows everything you're going to do before you do it, why would he already be like, oh, if you don't shape yourself self up, right? If, oh, you keep sinning, you're going to go to hell. It's like, doesn't he already know that? Doesn't he technically already know where I'm going? What's the point of changing if I already know at some point I'm destined to go where I'm going? Like, what's the point of behaving? If I already know, he knows what I'm going to do before I do it, so when I do it, it don't matter because he already knew where I'm going, and I know where I'm going because he already knows where I'm going. Like, I know I'm not good enough person to get into heaven. And he knows that too. So what the fuck is the point of being good if I already know I'm already destined for hell? See, now, I, I feel like most of, most of people... I like this start out with Scooby-Doo at some point. I feel like majority of everybody goes to heaven, right? But they only don't whenever they suicide themselves or they real life don't believe in God. There's only two, because other than that, I feel like you you go ahead. I, I do have one kind of argument to you about this, if you, if you don't mind me saying. Now go ahead. All right, so I had a conversation with an old man I used to work with, right? And I asked him, I said, hey. I asked him about God. He said, well, God likes this, that, and the other. I was like, okay, well, what if a person has good in their heart? They pray to God. They're very spiritual. They're like, hey, they pray to him all the time, but they happen to be gay. Mm-hmm. He said, well, they're not going to get into heaven. I was like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. 
But the good people, the good by everybody else, they pray all the time. They believe in God's wisdom. It's just the part about like sexuality. They're like, no, I, I love another man. I can't help him, but I do. Then what? He's like, but well, they're still going to hell. God doesn't allow that. I'm like, okay, well, if God loves you for everything and forgives you for stuff if you pray to him, why is that the one thing that keeps somebody from heaven? You fell in love with somebody of the same sex, but God's going to banish you even if you ask for forgiveness? He'll, he'll, he'll forgive murderers and this, that, and the other, but that's where he draws a line? Really? One thing that hurts nobody versus somebody that hurts everybody, you can ask for forgiveness, but you can't ask for forgiveness for that? That sounds confusing, right? Yeah. And the way I always looked at it was like this. God's interpretation is up to the user. You can say the majority says he believes this time the other. Fine. My thing is like this. God, if I got to be honest with you, is a forgiver, but at the same time, he's a bit petty. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to follow a certain set of rules. If you don't, you have to pray a little bit harder than other people to get his forgiveness. Yeah. That's, just, that's just how I look at it. You can be a good soul and do it this time the other. But if you break one of his rules... You got to put a little extra hours in, like a prison yard, to get his forgiveness in. Like, okay, by the end of it, you're good. By the end of it. You might have to have some trials, tribulations, or whatnot. But look, regardless of what's going on, I still got my faith in this, that, or the other. Because again, I think at the end of the day, even if you love what you love or into what you're into, I think I can get still a test. Because if God can't shake you with your convictions, he wants to at least challenge your faith. If your faith is still solid, despite what you're doing, I think you're still getting into heaven. It might yeah. be like, look, I love another man. I love this, that, and the other, whatever, right? But I still believe in you. I still believe you are a savior. I still believe you are the one. Kiss. May I please be allowed into heaven? Yes? Okay, thank you. That's it. I don't think he goes like, oh, you can't do this, you're going to hell. I think he's like, you can do this, fine. But I need to know you're still with me. Yeah, I feel like. Versus just condemning you for like, oh, I love you, but if your beliefs are like this, oh, whatever, fuck off. It's like, no, I don't think God's that petty. See, now, everything you're saying is facts. I feel like I agree with everything you said. It's just whenever you don't seek him, is when he won't take you with him. Because you have to seek him to see progress. See, that's, what, that, that's what gets me too about religion. It's like, they say, you have to find God. Okay, but they say, sometimes God will find you. How do you know when he finds you, if you don't seek him? Yeah, You'll he never will. know, you, but someone will always to. put like, you remember that time you almost died, but you didn't? That was because of God. It's like, was it, or was it because I got lucky? It's like. See, now, the thing is, you have to seek God. He can't seek you. You have to seek him first to understand him. Yeah, and I then, think he can find you yeah, if you, you seek him, not before him. Because yeah. if you never know of his existence, never know who he is even a thing, you're not going to know who he is. Because like, cause when he seeks you, that's when you see progress. But then when you see him But you progress, have to at least know who he is. Because yeah. you can't assume an unknowing force is God because you don't know who God is or you've never seen them before. Yeah. Now, because again... Let's say you've never heard of religion in your life and something good happens to you. Is that because of God? You don't know. You've never heard of God. God's never thinking of you. Then what? Vice versa. Now, they always say faith is having belief in something that you may or may not even see. Okay, fine. But how can you have faith in something that you can or can't see and then try to push other people to believe that that faith is the right faith if they can or can't see it? Because now, that could be like Trying to convince people aliens exist. Oh, there was some UFO UFOs over here. How do you know that? Well, because they abducted me. Then why are you still here? Well, uh, they let me go. I got out. Well, uh, that's crazy. Because there's you know, a guy on Netflix that actually said he got abducted. But then, his thing, I then can't, the, I can't prove he's wrong. I'm not that smart. But my thing is like this. All right, tell you what. I mean, well, abducting uh, people getting abducted is real though. My thing is like, no, people get abducted all the time. For real or for aliens. And it's or crazy that we get alerts from that. People getting abducted, we get alerts. No, no, no. What fuck with me is Amber Alert be like, hey, oh, this person got abducted. 
on the other side of the country. I'm like, the hell am I supposed to do with that? They, you know how long it takes them to drive from there to over here? Like 30 plus hours. What the fuck am I supposed to do? See, but I guess. Wait. Uh, see, no, Amber I can alert, sleep twice and never see it. See, no, uh, Amber Alert, I guess it's just it's just a warning so we know that, like. Yeah, like this person is on the laws, is, they out there. Because, like, I most, know. most of the time at Amber Alert, it will say getting abducted or unless somebody just got or someone, got, up. someone lost a call or whatnot and they be like hey this put it was over here this time this person is this yeah but, but the, his thing most of the time a, it, it's they, don't, they don't ever have a picture or anything else we can like look for it's like oh it's a latino or whatever 44 years old they kidnapped a 13 year old white girl it's like i mean they could be a mixed family for all we know We're like how the fuck we want oh they drove with, like a black car uh okay i guess we gotta keep an eye out for that it's like like it's never split they don't have they never drop names either it's like how are we gonna know like take it's so big is it big enough to where it's like okay that might be the person or it might just be a random dude just in the same area like no names no nothing it's like how the fuck was supposed to know that see and what's crazy is like if it getting abducted is real, how I'll, I'll how how will yeah. how will we know they got abducted? Like, why does that hit our that our like why does that hit our phone? Because I think it's like a, someone goes like, "Hey, my my child went missing," and then like the cops go like, "Okay, we're gonna like put out worldwide or like an See, area search." And when they can't find them, that's when they put abducted. I feel like because like. Cause then you it's, can't not, just, it's not that they kidnapped them; it's like they abducted them. We yeah. have no clue where they are. They're basically off the grid. That's like see, I that I feel like that's where abduct. But don't get me wrong; I feel like you could get abducted because obviously the world. If you got the, snatched without anybody knowing, I would argue that's an abduction because nobody knows where you are at that moment in time. You're gone. Like, don't get me wrong; I I believe in that because you could get abducted because the aliens are real, apparently. I would say if you got kidnapped, you were taken from one spot to another. If you were abducted, but, you were taken you, from one spot to somewhere else. They don't know where you are yet. But, but when you get abducted, that's aliens, though. Well, they say it's aliens, but abduction can be anything. You can get abducted from your country and get sent somewhere else. And I know. Oh, my bad. My fault, Jane. Uh, yeah, sorry. My fault. Uh, you want another drink? Yeah, I'll take one. I do have a Long Island upstairs. If you want to split that. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, because again, I here's the, I got to drink for the weekend, but realistically, I'm not gonna drink this all goddamn day by myself. That's gonna be not depressing, but I'm gonna be like, am I right now? I'm not like drinking it, you know? Yeah, I feel but like I'm a social drinker. When I'm with people, I'm like, yeah, let's get some drinks, maybe some shots or whatnot. Like, we'll chill. But by myself, kind of just like. Uh, I don't know, maybe later. I don't know. I see how I feel. Yeah, no, nah, I feel you on that. That's how I be. All right, well, I'm gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna use your I'm gonna get my drink. Keep the audience entertained a, a, a little bit. Because again, I always try to keep these at minimum at least an hour plus some stuff. Okay, uh, we will be right back. Okay, and we are back. We're actually going to finish the rest of this uh, Scooby-Doo discussion for a bit. All right, so we talked about, you know, they did the trap. They separated, right? Mm-hmm. And once they separated, they got a mysterious call the Spooky Island, which sounds very generic, but, like, you know, old school movies and whatnot. It's like, all right, all right, here's the way it is, right? Yeah. They still have fun at the end of the day, right? But let's say you and your game book up, and they say, hey, you want to come over to the Spooky Island? To solve this dance mystery, but it's just you. Like they ain't said nothing about your other gang coming over yet. Would you still go? Mm. If you had to say, like, if you, if they said, "Hey man, look, you want to come over here? You know, it's a little bit of fun." Da da da. The other gang over is just you. We want you over here to solve this mystery, and it's all expenses paid. It's free. Mm. I would go. For sure, just just to see what's like. See what's like. 
And then you get there, you wanted to go with the other gang. It's like, oh, I ain't seen y'all forever, but uh, what we are doing over here? And then you see, because again, you remember the first part of the movie. She's like, hey, it's Brad. We are messing. We, I've known you since so long. People that say they know each other, but the lady picks up the dude, throws him halfway across the room by herself. Yeah. Would you immediately be suspicious? Do you be like, oh, was that dude pushing his luck? Da da da. No, I'll be definitely be suspicious. Because why is she that strong? All right, fair enough, fair enough. And then you get to the resort. Looks nice, looks beautiful. And they're like, oh, you got to branch out. Go. Y'all can do what you want to do. Chill. Enjoy the music. Enjoy the festivities. What you want to do afterwards? What were you thinking, though? Mm-hmm. I would definitely take her out to see her vibe. See the area around you? See, yeah. see how they're going? And then you see big spooky monsters come up from like the woodwork. Like, you know, hey, we all chilling. What's all this nonsense? Da, 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 da. Monsters come out. Then what? Big spooky monsters, if they grab you, you capture it. What are you trying to do? I mean, at that point, I'm trying to kill them. You're going to try to physically slay the monsters. Uh, uh, I got, I, I got you right here. I got you right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's that? What's that? What's my thing? Because the reason you say that is because I cannot fucking find my app. Huh? Who the fuck took my shit? All right, fuck it. All right, never mind. I had a coin for the bat. It's gone. Whatever. We're gonna talk about it later. All right. All right. So. Obviously, no, you you have watched the old school with me, right? You've seen the old school. You know how it goes. You know, scrappy dude turns out evil. And he's like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crush you. I'm going to break y'all, da, 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 And then, like, they sit there at the end, right? Yeah. Now, we, what you showed me was the old school uh, mystery gang back in the day. Between the original Shaggy, Scooby, and all that. Like, tell me a little bit about the... Uh, Origin of those characters, mm. like from the movie. I mean, from the movie. From the newest one. The one yeah, the one we watched. Uh, well, the one I saw is like. It was on Cartoon Network. Wait. You want me to explain with you? Yeah. All right. All right. So. How the original movie, uh, I guess what you could say went to an extent, right? Mm-hmm. Was um the way it started off was like you see Scooby to an extent, kind of at the pound. Ain't no one really fucking with the big dog. There was this kind of like all oh, small, cute one. Blah, blah, blah. He gets one chance at being happy because this one little girl was like, "Hey, daddy, I want this like dog as my like thing." Scooby either gets so goddamn happy, he jumps on the guy, starts licking him, and because it's a big dog, like the guy's like, oh no, blah, 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 I'm scared, get this dog off me. Like he starts freaking out, so they had to muzzle Scooby. And they're like, hey, maybe next time, Scooby. Sorry about that. And because again, Scooby never gets picked, so it's really sad, right? At some point, though, during the drive, the uh, thing falls off. It's like, hey, the dog fell off the truck. Let's uh, keep the tab out for him. They don't do that. The dog falls off the truck and they're kind of like, well, fuck it. I guess he just fell off the truck. So I guess the point was like, well, what do you want to do? Uh, we're going to keep driving. So they basically ditch Scooby and Scooby goes like, hey, I'm going to run off. I guess I got to figure myself out. Comes across some ghosts, gets scared, runs off, runs into Shaggy in his uh, house, technically, right, Jay? Yeah. It's a house, but kind of like the group is like keeping tabs on him. Like the area. Like his family's cool with it, but it's like everyone else is kind of watching him. So they kind of got their own mystery to solve because they all got an attention for a very similar reason. I would still argue it's the bus driver's fault, but whatever. I agree. You alright, Gup? Yeah. You want to call it for the night? God, I'm out of there. <laughs> Fair enough. You had enough too. A bit too much to drink today. 
No. We'll call AI. We said chilling. What's kissing there? I need you later on. We'll talk about it in the morning. Word.